To access the REDCap database, you'll first need to go to starsearch.org or redcap.starsearch.org. In the starsearch.org menu at the top, you can click on the project hub and you'll be able to see a drop down menu. Click on the red cap and that will take you directly to redcap.starsearch.org. You should have received an email from the Star Search Steering Committee with your login details and your password. This is a temporary password and will be needing to be changed as soon as you log in. Just simply copy and paste the details into the redcap.starsearch.org login screen and click login. The next screen will ask you to change your temporary password. Your new password should be at least nine characters in length and must consist of at least one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter and one number to ensure security. Every 42 days you'll be required to change this password to a new password of similar security levels. Once you've done this, just simply click Submit and you'll be through to the REDCap homepage. Once you've clicked My Projects tab, you'll be presented with a dialog which asks you to produce a password recovery question. Quickly do this and then you can click Save and you'll be through to the Star Surge REDCap data collection tools. You can then use a variety of different options to navigate and manipulate your data. If you look to the left of the screen, there is a column which describes the data collection instruments you'll be using and various applications that you have access to. For means of data collection, you'll be interested in the two most important ones, the record status dashboard and the add and edit records options. Under the applications tab, there's a variety of options you can use. We'll discuss these later, but the main ones are the data export tools, the reports and statistics generators, so that you can generate stats and vital reports for your centre and present this to consultants there or use it for however you may wish. And also you can have a look at your data quality and identify missing data in your data sets. And you can then also export your data into other programs such as Microsoft Excel, SAS, SPSS and R. We're going to now use the Add and Edit Records tool to add a new patient to the Discover database. Here you can have a look at all your records, but the thing we'll be concerned about now is just the Add New Records button. Simply click the button and you'll be onto one of the, the first data collection instrument where a variety of fields will come up which will require you to enter details regarding the patient. For the first field, the patient ID, only complete this field if you have explicit and specific permission from your local centre and Caldecott Guardian to store patient NHS IDs on this REDCap database. Otherwise, if you're unsure, leave blank and just store the NHS ID on a separate identifying document on your trust computer system. The following data input forms will be using the details of a completely fabricated patient. You can find the details of this patient on the starsearch.org website under the Project Hub banner so you can follow what we're doing exactly on this video. Please note that if you want to try and input a fabricated patient yourself you won't be able to delete this record. The remaining data fields should be found in the Star Surge Discover protocol. This video is not really concerned about the definitions behind these, just kind of a demonstration of how you can fill them out in REDCap. Make sure you read the definitions in the protocol because they contain some very useful pointers and information about how you may obtain these and certain finer points. Now because I don't have the IMD decile calculator up now, I'm going to just leave this field blank and fill in at a later date. As I've not completed this form, because I still have to calculate the IMD decile, I'm going to select Incomplete and then click Save Record. This will then save this record and mark it as incomplete so I know that I need to go back to it and complete that record again. So I'm going to click through to the record status dashboard now just to see if I've got any uh, other patients that I need to collect data on and it's only number six, our current patient that we're concerned with. So I'm going to click on the red dot which indicates that we are missing data. 
So I've now calculated my IMD decile, I'm going to just put it in the record now. And scrolling down I can see that I've also forgotten to fill out my must nutritional risk index value as well. So I'm going to put that in too. That's kind of the real advantage to this traffic light system. At the bottom I'll just click completed and then I can save the record as complete. And the dashboard record status should go green. To continue data collection, I can now click on the operative details form. In this case, our patient is undergoing an elective left hemicolectomy for ulcerative colitis. And apparently, this is now laparoscopic assisted. So we're going to enter that data in here. Click complete because I've got no more fields that are blank, and I'm quite sure that I've completed that correctly. I'm going to click save record and move to next form which will take me through to the patient follow-up and complications. One thing to note about the patient follow-up and complications form is that it cannot be marked as completed until each area is filled in. As our patient has suffered post-operative complications, which are pneumonia and surgical site infection, we must make sure that every other complication which they have not suffered from under the system is marked as not applicable. The next form is asking us how we completed our follow-up and has three options. Because with our imaginary patient, we didn't have permission from the hospital to telephone the patient or call the patient's general practitioner, we use case notes, the online system and clinical letters to chase this patient's follow-up. At the end of the 30-day follow-up period, you need to make sure that you're happy with the quality of data you've collected. In order to indicate this to us, we are going to use the red cap lock function. Locking the data records indicates you're happy with the quality of the data and you would like it to be submitted centrally. To lock a record in red cap, all you simply need to do is go to one of the data collection forms within that record you wish to lock. You can either lock each form one by one, checking through each item of data individually, or if you're happy with your work, you can then lock all records at once. Do this by simply scrolling to the bottom of the form, clicking the lock record checkbox and then click save record to lock the individual form. If you wish to however lock the entire record, simply go to the left hand side bar and under add or edit records and the data collection forms you may see a lock all instrument padlock sign. Simply click this and respond to the dialogues which are raised upon your screen appropriately. In the next video we'll be looking at how to export your data and how to use the statistical analysis plots in REDCap to analyse your data.